everybody, it's your old pal Dan Classic. And today, just like I promised, we're doing Series 3 of the LJN WWF Wrestling Superstars. We've got a packed show today. So let's get started. Raz Holly, hit my music! It's, it's almost like he's like a noodle. It's 1986. The Chicago Bears shuffle their way to victory in the Super Bowl against then perennial losers, the New England Patriots. Top Gun takes top honors, becoming the highest grossing film of the year. And Mike Tyson wins his first world title, defeating Trevor Burbick in Las Vegas. But fuck all that shit, because LJN released 17 all new WWF Wrestling Superstars. Before we get started though, let's take a look at how these things go from my checklist to my display shelf. Just recently, I found a good deal on an adorable Adrian Adonis on eBay. Wow, that's a good deal! What seems like an eternity passes waiting for my package to arrive. Until finally... Oh, fuck yeah! So the package arrives, and here it is. It's Adrian Adonis, all right, and he looks okay. Some marks here and there. But then I didn't exactly pay a fortune for it either. After opening it up and verifying that it is what I ordered, I usually give these things a good cleaning. This figure in particular doesn't look so bad, but I'm going to be handling it and I don't know where the fuck it's been. I mean, who knows? It could have been in someone's garage or attic getting pissed on by field mice for all I know. Take a look at this Brutus beefcake I got a while back in a big lot. He looks like something bit his dick off. Ouch! So anyway, fill the sink about a quarter way with warm, soapy water. I use whatever dish detergent I've got lying around. You don't really need to scrub the shit out of it here either. This is just to get the germs and gross shit off before we get down to making it look fit for display. So rinse it good and gently dry it with a paper towel or a dish towel. After a few years of play or just getting thrown around in a toy box with other figures, these superstars can get some paint exchange here and there. Grab a cloth and some rubbing alcohol and get rubbing. Alcohol is gentle enough most of the time that it won't remove original paint, but strong enough to clear up the scuffs that these figures acquire. And that's about it. Later, I'll clean up the places where the paint overlapped and fill in his missing eyebrow but for now, Adrian Adonis is ready for the shelf. So let's take a look at Series 3. Series 3 is big. There's a whole shitload of guys here. And for the first time in the series, non-wrestlers are featured. So let's start with these non-wrestlers. And I can think of no better place to start than with Classy Freddy Blassie. You'll notice in this upcoming series, more and more figures have accessories. Hats, canes, and even a snake. The problem is, is that over the years, these things get misplaced, and then finding these figures complete becomes a gigantic pain in the dick. Oh yeah, and this Freddy Blassie looks like shit too. The likeness is good, but that ketchup and mustard outfit would suit Jim Cornette much more than the Hollywood fashion plate. So a custom outfit is certainly in this figure's future. Next is Super Mario himself, Captain Lou Albano. Good God, the paint jobs on some of these are awful. Look at his face. His signature rubber band. They just put a blob of blue paint on it. Great job, assholes. 
Okay, here's a good one. The mouth of the South Jimmy Hart. Mine's a bit beat up. He looked like he got dragged. But you can still tell he's got a great sculpt. And the paint job, while not the best I've seen, does have some fun little elements with the hearts on the megaphone and the music notes on the jacket. Next up is... Ha ha ha! But did you know, did you know that there was a Jimmy Hart variant with no hearts on the microphone? <laughs> I bet you didn't know that now, did you? I did, and I don't give a shit. Anybody that wants to read the Wikipedia page for the WWF LJN Wrestling Superstars, the link's in the description. Oh, oh, oh yeah? Let, 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 let me see, let me see. Fuck you, fanboy! Oh, come on! If you can't find the Wikipedia entry for something without a link, then you don't deserve to read it! Anyway, the next figure is one of my favorite 1980s WWF racist stereotypes, Mr. Fuji. Mine looks great. He's got his cane, and only needs a little paint here and there, and he'll be ready to speak broken English and throw salt in the eyes of unsuspecting white meat baby faces. The next figure is dear to my heart, probably one of the greatest performers in the history of the sport, Bobby the Brain Heenan. And mine looks pretty good. I'm not crazy about the original paint job, but all in all, it's a good likeness, and he's proudly displayed at my desk. This is another one of those figures that I would still get if I were only gonna get a few figures in the line. Lastly is Mean Gene Okerlund. He's not a manager no matter what the packaging says. He's the Howard Cosell of the WWF and is synonymous with the WWF at the time period, just as much as Roddy Piper, Andre the Giant, or even Hulk Hogan. Mine's beat the fuck up and missing his mic ball, but he was cheap, and for now, he'll do just fine. So that wraps it up for now. Now wait just a minute, Gorilla. Series 3 is my series. And you haven't mentioned the body. You're not done yet. Okay, first of all, I thought we went over the whole Gorilla thing last time. And second of all, we're out of time. I hate two-parters, Gorilla. Whoa, whoa. Shut up. So, until next time, I'm Dan Classic. And I'll see you all next time for part two of series three of the LJN Wrestling Superstars. Rath Holly, hit my music!